Yeah, I want to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to speak here. So this talk is a continuation of, of David's talk and I say something about how to lift these non-geometric fluxes to a double field theory setting because this sheds some light on how they can be interpreted geometric. So um, I want to rewrite the, a very particular double field theory action which is uh, particularly convenient for our purposes. And I want to show how this um, can be reformulated in a way that we have a kind of a geometric interpretation of these non-geometric fluxes, at least in a double field theory setup. And then I show how <coughs> that can be connected to the ten-dimensional supergravity um, setup we have seen in this uh, last talk. So uh, the strategy is the following. First of all, we want to perform the same field redefinition in the renewed language of double field theory and that we do in this uh, formulation where you have a uh, quantity E tilde which is basically the sum of G and B um, which has the advantage that each term in this action is uh, t-duality invariant separately what we're going to use later on and secondly we try to covariantize the result of this field redefinition with respect to half of the double field theory gauge transformation and that in particular means that we introduce a covariant winding derivative, this object here, and a new winding Riemann tensor, this object here, R check. So let me start with the field redefinition. I'm doing that in three steps, where first of all we realize that this equation in red is exactly the equation uh, David showed us just a second ago. And this thing on the right hand side is um, unfortunately the inverse of the uh, curly E, which appears in the double field theory action. So we have the problem that there appears an inverse in the field redefinition. But step two now says that if you look at T duality in general in double field theory, you find this uh, transformation rule here given by some ODD matrix H, A, B, C, D. And in particular, you can note if you set B and C to 1 and A and D to 0, you exactly get the inverse. So somehow it seems that T duality might help to formulate <coughs> this uh, field redefinition. But you note also that the coordinates transform accordingly. So in the special case I just mentioned, you find exactly what you need. And step three then is that we compare the quantities we want to um, equalize. Uh, that, uh, this G tilde, the new metric, and beta. And on the right hand side you find the transformed quantities after T duality, G prime, B prime, and you read off some rules for the field redefinition, which include that you replace uh, the metric by this tilde uh, metric and B field by the beta. And additionally you interchange the derivatives because the coordinate dependence changes. Yeah, I mentioned already that you can do this term by term, so it's especially easy. And the Dilaton density, just as a side remark, uh, is something that remains unchanged. So effectively, the field redefinition is simply re inverting all indices. So we take the double field theory action in this particular formulation, and we just replace everything with index down by something with index up, and vice versa. So, um, so far, we, we haven't employed any computation in this. That was quite easy. The next thing is that we want to read off where the non-geometric fluxes appear in this formulation. And therefore we look at the gauge symmetries of double field theory. They are parameterized by this uh, SODD vector. And if you now find some covariant objects with respect to the XI gauge transformations, so the vector part, um, you can formulate some geometric origin of the non-geometric fluxes. So covariant for us means that objects transform like tensors. We start with scalars and find that uh, the tilde derivative, so the winding derivative of a scalar is not a vector, but we can introduce a new derivative, d tilde, which involves uh, an ordinary derivative contracted with a beta um, to give something covariant. And curiously, it already appears that non-geometric fluxes are given by a commutator of these two derivatives where R flux is just derivative on beta. Next step is that we um, broaden that to tensors. So we define a covariant derivative for vectors using a new connection symbol gamma check. 
and we constrain it by these two equations where we first uh, claim some kind of metricity condition and secondly we want that the commutator of two derivatives acting on a scalar is <coughs> simply given by a covariant object which is the R flux. If we do so we find that this new connection symbol is simply a connection symbol, a Christoffel symbol given by the new D tilde derivative plus some terms that involve Q. So in a sense the antisymmetric part of this connection gamma check is given by the Q flux. So that's step one to identify a geometric, geometric interpretation of these non-geometric fluxes. And finally we can define a Riemann tensor in, in a more or less standard way where we commute to derivatives uh, acting on a vector and we find that it is given by some expression that might look familiar where we simply replaced all derivatives by this new d tilde derivative but additionally in the second line we find that the non-geometric fluxes enter this Riemann tensor directly. Then we define a scalar curvature like usual with the contraction of the Riemann tensor and eventually we can formulate the double field theory reaction we have just obtained after the field redefinition given uh, by these five quantities where we have a scalar curvature based on the ordinary derivative and another scalar curvature that is based on this new derivative d tilde those appear here it's just the sum then we have the r flux which is entering as a tensor contribution exactly in the same way as the h flux enters and then we have two dilaton terms both of them uh, one of them with the ordinary derivative and the other one as well with the tilde d tilde derivative the new thing and then additionally we have to add a tensor tau i which is needed to match and uh, is given by the trace of the gamma check connection symbol so let me note once more that each term of this new action is now covariant under a xi gauge transformation so again that is half of the double field theory gauge transformations and these are made manifest by this approach of course the action is still invariant under the, the other half of the gauge transformations but that is in, in a non-trivial matter so we have to combine different terms and more importantly we have found now that the Q flux just enters as a part of the connection and that is very similar to how the geometric flux F enters um, the, the other uh, scalar curvature and the R flux simply appears as a tensor like the H flux did before so in a double field theory setup we have kind of a geometric origin for these fluxes and to make contact to the 10D supergravity uh, formulation of all that we first note that you can of course reduce double field theory in this curly E formulation by simply uh, setting the, the tilde derivatives to zero which is the solution to the strong constraint and you then find the ordinary supergravity and SNS sector given by phi G and B and we have seen that performing a field redefinition there brings you to a supergravity formulation in terms of phi tilde G tilde beta and the same thing we get if we take <coughs> the, the um, double field theory action I just presented and do the same thing when we're setting all the d tilde derivatives to zero. So in a sense we have obtained the same result in 10 dimensions but going this detour over double field theory having an easier computation and additionally some kind of geometric interpretation. And finally I want to mention that yeah, some uh, recent results in, in this topic matches, match nicely to what we find. For example there are some expressions for the R flux around when people did uh, shirk schwarz reductions of double field theory, for example Aldazabal or Geisbühler, and this expression is exactly the, the expression we have, which was the d tilde derivative on beta, and also um, some of the, or the Bianchi identities Ralph mentioned yesterday, you can reproduce, for example, by just taking the uh, covariant derivative of the R flux. So to sum up, I want to emphasize that Double field theory, in some sense, allows for a geometric interpretation of non-geometric fluxes. Yes. Time for questions. In uh, David's talk, um, he threw away a total derivative that goes uh, through the field redefinition in this action. 
Um, how is that uh, looking like in the double field theory language? Do you do the same or is it clear? Yeah, I mean, all the connections I drew are up to total derivatives in, in many places, but finally at least you have it when you, when you do this step. So, for example, it's well known if you go from here to here, this is not matching exactly, but matching up to a total derivative. And the same occurs on the other side. So, yeah, you, you have total derivatives as well. And they are basically the same, yeah? So there's nothing you can make a comment on that bit. Yeah, if you combine those total derivatives with the Gibbons Hawking term, which is a total derivative in gravity, then that itself becomes a boundary term in the double field. But you need to combine those two things together. I don't see any more questions, so we thank you again.